Adjustment Meeting, Monday, June 8th, 2020. I hereby declare this meeting of the Howell Township Zoning Board to be open, adequate notice having been given pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. On December 6, 2019, a copy of said notice was mailed to the Asbury Park Press and the Tritown News. Second, on December 6, 2019, a copy of said notice was hand delivered to the clerk of the Township of Howell. Third, on December 6, 2019, said notice was posted in the Office of the Zoning Board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. On May 21, 2020, a notice was sent to both the Asbury Park Press and the Star-Ledger that this meeting would be held remotely using communication equipment due to COVID-19 restrictions. This meeting is a judicial proceeding. Any questions or comments must be limited to the issues of what the board may legally consider in reaching their decision and the decorum appropriate to a judicial hearing must be maintained at all times. In addition to the live feed on YouTube, this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. Thank you, Eileen. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes, you may. Mr. Hughes. Here. Mr. Mertens. Here. Mr. Moretti. Present. Mr. O'Donnell. Here. Mr. Orozco. I have not heard from Mr. Orozco. Mr. Saya. Present. Mr. Cantor. Present. Mr. Gonzalez has been excused. Chairman Nansen. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. How many how many total members is that, Eileen? Seven. Okay, good. I thought I thought so. Okay, can everybody please stand for the merit the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <laughs> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, liberty, justice, for all. Thank you. Mr. Tropley, you mind swearing in the professionals, please? Not at all. Would the professionals please raise the right hand? Repeat after me. You swear the testimony, actually, not repeated after me, but do you swear the testimony you will give this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. I do. The record should reflect to what we have Ms. B, Mr. Conner, and Mr. Howard all sworn. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Approval of minutes. There's no minutes this evening. Vouchers. I have no vouchers this evening. Correspondence. I have no correspondence this evening. Eileen, why don't you announce you know, about our next meeting? Our next meeting will be a hybrid meeting. The board members, the professionals, and the applicants and their professionals will be here in the main meeting room at the Howell Township Municipal Building at 4567 Route 9 in the second floor. Members of the public will not be allowed into the meeting, but will still have the opportunity to attend the meeting by watching it live on YouTube or by calling in the number that will be posted on the agenda. They will also be able to call the main meeting room here with any questions or comments when the chairman opens the hearing up for members of the public. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Any resolutions? No resolutions this evening. Okay, then let's dive right in. Applications before the board. Case number BA1911, K10 Holdings, LLC. It's a used variance. Only a used variance. They will come back for and approval later. Application of K10 Holdings, LLC is applicant. And Robert Bethany, LLC is owner, seeking a used variance. 
plan approval to construct four new multi-tenant warehouse structures with associated office spaces, various concrete walls, walk trash enclosures, two stormwater management bases, three septic fields, a is blocked 41 by 2602, 413 Oak Lim Road. This application was originally scheduled to be heard October 28, 2019, when it was carried to December 9, 2019, with no further notice. After some testimony December 9, 2019, the application was carried to February 10th with no further notice. On February 10th, 2020, the application was carried to April 27, 2020. And on April 27th, it was carried to May 18th. After some testimony on May 18th, the application was carried to June 8th, 2020 with no further notice. Expiration date. June 30th, 2020. Eligible voters, Hughes, Mertens, Moretti, O'Donnell, Orozco, Saya, Cantor, and Nansen. And just one moment well, before we get started, yes. we're going to mute everyone except the applicant's attorney, the person who is doing the testifying, the board's attorney, and the chairman. So give us one second while we mute everyone, and then Dante, you can start. All right, Eileen. Yes. I, I would like to advise all of the board members, just please take note as we're going through whatever testimony is done. If you have any questions, I'll open up one by one for your questions or comments at that time. And then at, at the end, because this application is already, you know, it's most of the testimony has already been put on the record. And so, you know, this is the clean up a few things and then we'll move the application to public. If they have any comments or questions, they can call in and do that. And you know, we'll try to move forward this way. Okay, Mr. Alfieri, you're good to go. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Sir. Dante Alfieri, applicant. As the chairman noted, uh, we were here previously before the board, and there was testimony provided by our professionals. Um, tonight, I have uh, Christine Cafone, as well as our other professionals, if there is other des testimony that uh, you need. Um, we did take a lot of the comments that the board professionals and the board made last meeting, and we've submitted some revisions to the plans. If you'd like, I could go through them. Mr. Chair, if you'd like me to go through what exactly yeah. they've done since they've been here last time. Right. Um, basically, uh, Mr. Alfieri is correct that they they, you pretty much completed all your testimony, but there was some concern over the, the project having structures in the ARE 6 zone, which on this particular property is kind of a unique zone line, kind of jogs in and out. Um, they had come back at the last meeting with a modest modification. I guess they, they understood that that was not really what the board was looking for and then have gone and, I don't know, uh, Matt, if you could put the new sketch up, if, can we do that? Yeah, I can, just one second. Okay. One second. No problem. Yeah, so now, thank you. So now if you look at what's on the screen, you can see that that whole middle section where the extended basin is located in the green space is the ARE 6 zoning area. So they have removed all the structures out of that ARE 6 area, have created a setback along the front of 110 feet to push the building as far off of Oakland Road as possible. If you can see there, you know, the, the on the right side of that front building is basically a lot line. So they have literally removed every structure out of the ARE6 and listening to our comments. In addition, what they've done is that they have also added a cul-de-sac. If you look at the end of the roadway, instead before it was kind of a dead end, now they've added a cul-de-sac which can facilitate turnarounds. Um, and the parking is still based upon not, it's based upon 90% warehouse and 10% office. So I think at the end of the day, what they've done is they've moved things back away from the road. They have made a commitment at a prior hearing when they come back for site plan, if the board acts favorably on the application, 
they'll deal with whatever landscaping is necessary to address the concerns of, of the neighbor that had come to one of the prior meetings. But they really have addressed my primary concern, which was development in that ARE 6 zoning district. You know, it was kind of a balancing act between what some of the board members wanted with respect to moving that front building back and what other board members wanted, which is to remove the structures from the ARE 6 zone. So I do think that this is a good balance between the two. Um, and as a result, I ha miraculously have no further comments on the application. Oh, and the only other one little thing I want to note is that the overall project size has reduced, they've reduced the overall project size from 72,000 square feet to 58,500 square feet. So I would consider that a significant reduction. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I don't mean to stand on, step on your toes that day, but if there's anything that I missed. Oh, maybe. No, Jen, I believe you hit everything. Um, unless the board has further comments, I, I don't necessarily believe we have to provide any further testimony. I, I agree. Uh, I'm going to just go right down the, down the line here. Mr. Hughes, you have any comments or questions? One second. We have to unmute everyone. Okay. Uh, no, Mr. Chair. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm, I'm good with what we have. Tom O'Donnell, uh, Ms. O'Donnell. I don't have any questions, but I'd just like to say the change looks very good, and uh, yeah. I like it. Thank you. Mr. Saya. Uh, it's a chance to see that up on screen because it, it, it never loaded. So I do have a question, and the question is the ratio between office space and warehouse space, how has that changed, Jen? It, I think initially, Dante, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but initially I think it was 80-20, and now it's 90-10. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And, and does that reduce the, uh, the, the septic that are required? Um, they have three septic fields proposed. Obviously, they would have to get approval from the County Board of Health. Um, you know, and, and have the borings witness, et cetera. But they have, in my opinion, provided adequate septic. I mean, obviously, that's Charlie's domain, too, so I would defer to him. But um, that is, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and this is, keep in mind, this is for the use only. They're going to have to come back for site plan. So a lot of the details, hopefully, will be cleared up between now and then. So then, Charlie? Yes. So then, Charlie? Go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman and Mr. Say, if I could just add on to what Jen said. So, uh, yes, obviously the uh, septic is going to be determined on the uh, uses of each building and, uh, you know, what actual, um, you know, uh, whether it's got how many bathrooms it has and, and things like that. Um, I look back at the prior iteration of the plans. The parking demand hasn't changed as far as percentage. It was 90 percent uh, warehouse, 10 percent office previously that hasn't changed obviously with the reduction in the total square footage of the building the parking demand at the site as a whole is also going to be reduced um, but they're still meeting their requirement for uh, the ordinance you know 300 square foot you know one space per 300 square foot for office and then obviously one per 5,000 for warehouse so that, so they're still meeting that um, the comment that I kind of had was looking at the rear of the site um, uh, when we get to the site plan, there were some walks uh, in between the loading zones and the buildings that had been eliminated. Um, if the applicant can look at um, prior to coming before the board for, you know, a, a PNF approval, should the board work favorably on the use, um, see if we can incorporate that just so there's no access issues at the rear of the site. Um, I would note um, with the stormwater management basin, obviously that's still very conceptual layout. For the board, uh, you know, it may change. The basin may be shifted a little bit. Um, you know, it might have to move back further to the rear of the site to the, uh, you know, three, uh, I think it's 18,000 square foot units at the rear of the site, um, just how the grading works out. So so there may be some changes when it gets to the site, but, uh, you know, it's hard to just nail that down without having a full site plan design. But uh, at this point, I'm, I'm comfortable with what they presented. And I think obviously the changes that they've made have reflected you know the, the items that were brought up by the board at the at the prior hearing. So um, I have nothing further at this time. Thank you, Chairman. I'm good. Okay, Mr. Martin. I'm good too, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Moretti. 
Now, more no goods, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cantor. I have no questions, Mr. Chairman. Okay, did that get everybody? Okay, I believe I so. Okay, uh, let's open it up. I need a motion to open to public. I make a motion that we open to public. I think already. Mr. Moretti. I'll second that, Mr. Hughes. Second, Hugh, Hughes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed. Okay, Eileen, you want to open the uh, line up If you don't have any comments and want to mute yourself, feel free to do so, but I'm going to unmute everybody. Okay. The chairman has opened the hearing up for members of the public. If anyone has any questions or comments on the application, please call the number on the screen with the meeting code ID and PIN code, and we'll take you one at a time. Thank you. Along with that. He said he'll do it after the match, 30 minutes stops. I mean, you're going to have to take charge of who calls in or not. We will. We're going to let this sit for a couple minutes and see if anybody's going to call in. Hello? Put, can you put it back for a minute? On the screen. Do I have to call in again? Hello? Yes, Hello. go ahead. Okay, I didn't know if anybody could hear me. This is Bob Carroll from across the street. For us okay. Oak Run Road. Mr. Chairman, yes, anyone, who wishes, anyone who wishes to speak needs to be sworn. Okay, sir. You, go ahead, Mr. Petropoli. Okay, thank you, sir. Would you um, please raise your right hand, and do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Yes, and again, uh, you do also affirm that you had your right hand raised during the oath, correct, sir? Correct. I can't see you. Thank you. Your name again for the record, and uh, name and address, and then you may proceed. Thank you. Bob Carroll, C-A-R-R-O-L-L. -L. Address is 406 Oak Glen Road. Okay, you may proceed, sir. Okay. Um, the plan looks amicable to me as well. I, I like what they've done. Um, I'm not sure if this is a zoning or a planning um, issue, but um, I listened to the whole last meeting, and I thought briefly at the end there was some talk of, uh, of a larger shoulder being along the front of the site, a shoulder for the road. Um, I didn't see that on the plan. Uh, I didn't get to speak at the last meeting. I didn't get over to the public, so I don't know if it got lost. Um, my only reservation would be if trucks could park along the side of the street, you know, while waiting to deliver. Mr. Alfieri, you want to address that? Whether or not the truck they are going to the street? Mainly, mainly overnight parking is what I would be concerned with. On the street? Yeah, no. No. We wouldn't allow overnight parking on the street. That's not permitted. We're going to comply with the ordinance as it relates to. And all the parking, quite honestly, is back behind the building, so it wouldn't even be in front of the building. Uh, okay. So, I, I, like I said, it was it was difficult to. No, I totally understand, and I do think that you should you should just keep you know should the board act favorably tonight, you should keep your eyes open because for another notice because they will be coming back for a site plan application, and a lot of the details associated with that. Mm -hmm. Um, will be discussed at that time as well. But as of right now, there's no, there's no parking on Oakland Road and all the parking spaces are behind the building, the front building, and then as you go back into the site. So there's not even parking in the front yard, you know, in front of the proposed building. Perfect, yes, the site plan looks great. I just wanted to make sure in case this was something that needs to be handled at zoning, not planning, that I just made the point. No, I, I understand and that's a good comment for sure. 
So, Mr. Chairman, okay, if I could just add, that's all I if have. I could, if I could just add to that, so um, uh, the applicant didn't agree to do shoulder widening. It's not reflected on the current iteration of the plans. Um, if should the board rule favorably, I'll, I'm sure myself and Ron will make sure that the uh, uh, resolution for the application carries a condition that when they come back to site plan, they have to add shoulder widening across the property frontage as they agreed to at the prior hearing. Any I'm not questions? requesting the shoulder widening. I, I was thinking that that was the shoulder widening would be a bad thing that would allow a truck to park there overnight and run yep. all night long while I'm trying to sleep. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, obviously it's up to the board what they what they want to require the applicant to do. Um, personally, I would recommend it just because it's a very narrow road. You're going to be having, um, you know, vehicles that are box trucks that are coming in and out of the site. Uh, the shoulder will make it a little bit easier for them to ingress and egress from the site. Um, certainly, if the applicant or the, the board would like, um, they could have the applicant post no parking uh, signage along the frontage there, something to that effect. Uh, and then obviously it, it comes down to the, uh, uh, you know, the police department for enforcing no parking on the uh, property frontage there. But for, from my perspective, I, I, I would prefer the shoulder widening just to allow you know, a little bit safer ingress and egress of these vehicles coming to and from the site. Okay, I understand it from an engineering standpoint. Um, UNFI Foods directly down the street, they have signs posted from one end to the other, no parking, and there's trucks parked there all the time. I mean, it comes down to the discretion of the board, Mr. Chairman, whether or not uh, you want to require the applicant to do so. That would be a site plan, right? We, we can, yeah, we can uh, put it in that it's to be considered, uh, you know, on future future site plan submittals. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Also, what about invoking New Jersey's Title 29 on this application? 39. 39, right? 39, 39 correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Too, Mr. Saya. Right. Agree. Yeah. Okay. There, any other for any other questions from the public? I'm gonna put the. I'm uh, all done. Thank up. you very much. We're gonna see if anybody else calls in. Okay. We'll give it another five minutes. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that have questions or comments regarding this application? We're going to give it just one more minute because there is about a 15 second delay on YouTube. Mr. Chairman, I'm not getting any other calls here. Can you put the site plan back up? Any, any other public? Yes. 
Are there any other members of the public that have any questions or comments on this application? Okay, Eileen, I yes. think that, that should do it, right? Yes, it should. Yes. Okay, can I have a motion to close public? Make I'll make a motion to close. Who made that motion? I think it was Mr. Hughes. Did you make that motion? Yes, I did. Okay, right, I'll second. Do I have a second? I'll second, Merton. Okay. Mr. Murphy, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Who opposed? I don't think anyone did. I think that was a late aye. It was oh, a okay. delayed aye. Okay. Uh, Mr. Alfieri, do you have any further comments? Uh, yes. Uh, I know that there was a mention of the shoulder widening. Uh, is this is something that is this something that the board is in favor of? We just would like to know as we're planning if the board is in favor of the, the current use variance portion um, when we're going to the site plan, whether or not we need to, to account for that. Yeah, if, if the board looks favorable, I, I think we need to plan on doing that widening on the road. They comply with Title 39, sir. I'm sorry, I'm getting a ton, ton, ton of feedback. So I don't know, like, if you can hear something happening in your house, I can hear something happening in your house. Jim Moretti, I think actually you're, we're getting some feedback on your line. Can you mute yourself? There, right. whoever did that. I, was, yeah, that's I think that was Tom O'Donnell, actually. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, once it comes to the vote, I'll take them off. Okay. Okay. Other than that, any other closing statement, Mr. Alfieri? Are you good? Um, we, we would just like, uh, at the, the previous uh, few meetings, we provided some uh, testimony from our professionals. We believe that that testimony, uh, coupled with the, the changes to the design, uh, warrant the approval of the use variance. And again, if the board is so inclined to grant the use variance, we'll be back before the board uh, seeking the site plan approval. Charlie, do you have any further comments? Yeah, just one quick one, Mr. Chairman. Um, at the last meeting, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. had provided some testimony, given some clarification on some typos in the traffic report. Um, I just ask as uh, any condition of approval that uh, they, they sub submit a revised uh, um, traffic report, just reflecting the changes uh, based on the new building footprint. Obviously, it's going to be a lesser uh, traffic generated from the site because the footprint decrease. I just want to, whatever we have, match to what was presented to the board tonight. Jennifer? Nothing for me. Okay. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chair? What are you all talking about? Who said that? I don't know. Patty Woolley. Does this have anything to do with Sick Hill? What? What application are you asking Hill? about? I'm sorry? What application are you asking about? Thick Gill. Gill Petroleum? Gill Petroleum oh. is on June 18th. It is not on this evening. A it's a planning okay, board thank case. You. Goodbye. All right, yeah, very good. Goodbye. But the public has been closed. Okay. Right. What's the pleasure of the board? All right, Mr. Chairman, Paul Sayers. Um, on case number BA19-11, K10 holding, you know, the, the applicant is in, in, in good favor, um, met some of the uh, board's concerns. We reduced it down to 58,000 square feet. Um, there is the, uh, the, the concern 
of, uh, you know, whether or not, you know, the parking in the front can be controlled by Title 39. I recommend we include that as a condition uh, in, in an area of recommending approval to, uh, to give this applicant a, uh, a, a use variance plan approval. Over. Have a motion by Mr. Saya. Do I have a second? Mr. Chair, Matt Hughes here. I'd like to second that, and I appreciate the effort that the applicant made to, uh, to comply with what we were looking for and to, uh, to get everything straightened out there. We appreciate it. I'd like to second that. Okay. Can we have a roll call and further findings of fact from each member, please? Yes, you may. I will. Mr. Hughes. Uh, yes, uh, finding a fact, I would just say again, I, I appreciate that they they made the effort and uh, the adjustments through the, uh, through the few meetings that we have had, and um, and this looks like a good application, and I say yes. Thank you, Mr. Mertens. I concur with the other members who uh, made the motions. Uh, I think the applicant has made a substantial improvement, and pretty much came. Uh, listen to our issues and has met it, so I'm going to vote yes, too. Thank you. Mr. Moretti. Yes, and I agree with the other uh, members. They have met every uh, aspect that we've asked them to comply with, and it was a uh, nice job on their part. Yes. Thank you. Mr. O'Donnell. Yes, I agree with everyone else. Uh, I like the changes. The project looks better. And uh, we should move on to the uh, site plan. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Saya. I made the motion. You still need to vote. You still have to vote. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you Mr. Know, Cantor. As far as, as, far, as far as the finding of fact, of course, you know, there was Charlie's um, you know, comments with regards to the loading zone and the access and so forth. We just want to make sure that we include all that in, the, in this initial approval. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Say, if I can address that, back at some of the earlier meetings, there were a number of stipulations that the applicant offered, which uh, I had counted on that dealt with uh, everything from revision of the stormwater basin to comply with the 50-foot buffer to putting dusters in block, Limitations on the usage of buildings, no manufacturing, mechanical, medical. Um, the front, the building appearances will be similar. Uh, there will be a contribution to fund uh, to the sidewalk fund. Wall signage to comply with, with the ordinance. Um, signage will uh, again be compliant. So those are the things I had, and I don't believe anything has changed. Just to give you an idea, and I can incorporate that into your motion as conditions of, uh, let's say, site plan approval. Please do, Mr. Tropley. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Charlie or Jen, anything else on conditions? There was one other thing that I neglected to mention, which is left open, that I recall was um, Wendell, I believe, had indicated um, banning tractor trailers from the site. I don't think there was ever any indication if you wish to defer that or discuss it as another condition now or just defer to site plan. I just wanted to point that out. I don't know if the board uh, ever made a comment on that one way or another. Yeah, but I never, I give my vote. All right, I'm up to Mr. Cantor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, given that the applicant has made significant changes to their plan and now all of the entirety of the building structures are within the ARE 6 zone, uh, I vote in favor of the application for the use variance. Thank you. Chairman Nansen? Mm -hmm. Yes, I want to address the tractor trailers. I, I don't see tractor trailers actually being able to maneuver in there, especially if there's traffic or cars on the site, but that, that there again would have to be a, a site plan issue. Um, they would have to be able to prove that they can maneuver in there. Um, I, I know a 58 footer isn't going to make that, that turnaround there on the cul-de-sac. There, there's actually no way it would. So, you know, that, that could be a site plan issue. 
But yes, y'all addressed my issues. I I requested a building to be dropped, dropping twenty some odd thousand square foot. You know, that, that's pretty pretty reasonable. And I I do agree with the rest of the board members. The site looks buildable now, and so my vote is yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you, Good Chairman. Good luck, Mr. We'll see you at site plan. I appreciate your time tonight. Have a great evening. Thank you, you too. too. Okay, Eileen, the board's going to take a five-minute break. Okay. We're going to mute everybody. We're going to mute everybody in the meantime. For members okay. of the public that may be watching or listening, the board will take a five-minute recess. We'll be back at 835. All the members are back, Mr. Chairman. You can. Okay. The zoning board will now reconvene. Okay. Okay. Next case before the board, case number BA twenty one hundred three, Robert Weir, bulk variance for single family dwelling with septic system. Application of Robert Weir as applicant. El Salado. I'm going to screw this one up. Cayuto Kuto as owner seeking a bulk variance approval to construct a single family dwelling with septic system where one acre is required only 0.73 acres exist on premises now is block 150 lot 11 22 222 Road expiration date September 16 2020 welcome Good, uh, you guys hear me? Yes, we Everybody can. Me? Hi, good uh, evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the board. My name is Rudolph Maharaj. Uh, I, I represent the applicant, Mr. Weir, in regards to his application for 222 Peskin Road. Um, as the chairman mentioned, uh, we are seeking uh, both variants for minimum lot size, as well as for minimum lot depth, as well as an accessory structure in the front yard. Um, the documents that will be submitted before the board are the development application and checklist, um, as well as a uh, waiver request list that I've submitted, um, a prior zoning board approval, uh, with the, which the board should have, as well as a survey, plot plan, and uh, architectural plans and designs. Um, at this point, uh, we only have one witness uh, who we believe needs to be put by testimony. That's Mr. Anthony Maltese. Uh, the engineer who created the who created the designs for the plot plan, um, and so if the you know if the board accepts jurisdiction and uh, does not have any more questions, I will proceed. Mr. Tropley, you want to swear in the witness? Hold on one second. He was muted. Go ahead. Am I on? Sorry, Ron. You are. That's okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Maharaj, I had one question before we proceed. Do you have or have you prepared any buy-sell letters to support your uh, variance request? Do you have any indication of that? Of a buy-sell letter? Buy or sell letters. In other words, did, to your knowledge, did the applicant approach any of the adjacent neighbors or will Mr. Maltese in his testimony indicate that the lot could not be made to be a conforming lot. Uh, to my knowledge, Mr. Weir did not did not uh, approach any of the uh, neighboring uh, properties uh, when filing this application. However, we did send the appropriate notices as required by the MLUL. Right. But no offers to buy or offers to sell. I, I just, like I said, you know, we can get into that. I'm sure General or Charlie will address that later on. I just okay. wanted to make sure that there were no additional uh, evidential um, items that you had other than what you put oh, on Oh, no. Record. No, not at this time. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Chair, with that, I, I'd be happy to swear in Mr. Maltese, who I can see, and I, I can see him raise his right hand as well. So, at this point, Mr. Maltese, uh, do you swear that the testimony you give this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so you God? I do. And state your full name for the record, please. Uh, Anthony Maltese. M -A -L -T -E. Thank you. Thank you. Sworn, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, could we have your credentials, please? 
Uh, yes, sir. I'm licensed in the state of New Jersey as a professional engineer, a professional, professional land surveyor, and a professional planner. Um, I've been licensed for, for about five or six years. I've been design engineering for 20. Um, and I've uh, represented several applications in front of several boards throughout New Jersey. What's your education background? I have a bachelor's in engineering from Hofstra University and I have uh, a bachelor's in land surveying in, uh, from NJIT. Okay, and you will be testifying in re what regards? I believe I'll be testifying in regards to uh, land surveying and also engineering for this application. Okay. And you're not going to put any plan and testimony on? Uh, no, I, I am not. Okay. Okay, we accept your credentials. Mr. Mai? So, good uh, evening, Mr. Maltese. Uh, obviously, we are in this, but could you just tell me, did you prepare the design, the plot plans for this application? I did. Okay, can you just take the board through those plans briefly? Sure. Do I have control of that or no? No. Okay. You can let me know what you want and I'll try my best. No problem. It's still loading. On my end, it's still loading. Yeah, Matt, still loading on my end. I have anything you put up to me, Matt. Uh, my screen. Better? No. Nope. There you go. Let that finish loading and we'll be okay. Is it not fully loaded? Not yet. I see about half the plan. And it's gone. Yeah, let me try again. Hold on one second. There we go. There you go. Oh. And it's going again. I got it. Yeah, it'll it'll show up in a second. Give it a second. Oh. Now it disappeared. There it is. Got it. Okay. That took time. Okay. Okay. So the, the property is located in uh, the ARE2 zone. Um, it's on the, the corner of Georgia Tavern Road and Peskin Road. To the west is Georgia Tavern Road, and to the south is Peskin Road. Um, the lot is currently vacant. Uh, there was a previous application. Can everybody hear me? Yes. There was a previous application in uh, 1987. Uh, that approved a, uh, a C variance for an undersized lot to construct. Uh, there was a stipulation in there to um, for the applicant to come back in front of the board to uh, have a plan within 12 months. That time has passed. Uh, at that time, the applicant that that got this approval did look to purchase the land near uh, next to the lot, but failed to do so. Um, as it stands, the lot is non-conforming, undersized. It's 0.713 acres, uh, whereas one acre is required. There are several lots along Peskin Road with the same deficiencies. Um, also, the, the lot has a 200-foot lot depth requirement where we have uh, 142.65 feet. Uh, the property has a, a proposed septic system located to the to the east of the property and uh, due to the seasonal high water table it's a it's a mounded system the way we have it right now it's it's gravity flow um, this could be altered if uh, if if the applicant wants to do a pump system um, the house is proposed for a two bedroom and the septic field is a designed for a four bedroom the, the driveway is a 20 foot wide driveway that suffices for a two bedroom or a four bedroom. It can handle four, four parking stalls. 
uh, four parking spaces on the driveway and one parking uh, space in the garage. Um, there was a comment uh, or a question regarding the shed that is going to be removed. And if the applicant wishes to put a shed uh, on the property, he'll have to um, go through the, the proper regulation to, to get that permitted. Um, Rudy, you want to you want to go through anything else on here? Yeah, I just Here's briefly. Uh, you indicated that this was a vacant lot currently. Yes. And so, to your knowledge, this is the first use or the only use of the property at this point would be the proposed application. It's vacant. It was it was residential use, and yes, the proposed use is also residential. Okay. <clears throat> so that. Um, and are you aware of any uh, substantial detriment to the neighboring properties? I am not. Wait, wait, wait. He said he wasn't testifying as a planner. Oh, You're okay. asking him now planning testimony, so. I, well, I apologize. I apologize, Sam. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just asking, okay, so then I guess in your, in your capacity as an engineer, uh, can you think of any engineering issues that are created by the, by the proposed plan? Uh, I was talking to the applicant prior you know, prior to this uh, the board meeting tonight, and um, we do have an issue with with how much fill is required on the property, and we plan on bringing that down. Uh, regarding the stormwater, we obviously plan on putting installing drywalls for the the structure itself, and currently the the way the property uh, sits elevation wise, it the, the the stormwater runoff runs from the south from Peskin Road to the rear of the property, uh, draining down to a 20-foot wide drainage easement shown on the tax map. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if that that is a drainage easement. On the tax map, it calls it out as a 20-foot wide township easement. Uh, I, I'm assuming I have to look into this further, but there is two structures along Georgia Tavern Road if you want to bring that plan up. That's in line with that easement in the back to the rear of the property. Uh, okay. And uh, so you indicated that this was for residential use. Uh, yes. And that uh, and that you said you mentioned that it, it, it is in line with uh, other properties along Georgia Tavern Road. Yeah, there are several properties along Peskin Road and Georgia Tavern. Uh, particularly Petkin, where there there is uh, one acre properties, besides the nine acre property that that's uh, a couple lots down. Okay, okay. And did you have an opportunity to review the board's technical memo on this uh, on this application? Yes. All right. And I, I I know you touched briefly on some of the concerns they raised, but um, do you believe there'll be any issue with uh, I guess bringing the the proposed application and, and meeting these concerns that are raised in the board's uh, memo? No, I don't have any, neither myself or the applicant have any issues with meeting the uh, requirements or requests uh, mentioned in the technical review. Uh, so, I mean, if, unless, the, unless the board has uh, anything further, I, I, uh, I don't have any more questions at this time for the way. Well, Mr. Mr. Maltese. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you say the two catch basins on Georgia Tavern, they they do not go down that easement. That drainage does not go behind your, your property there. It goes down to the reservoir, towards the reservoir, not on the reservoir side, but on the opposite side of the road. And it empties into the, the sort of like lake that's across Peskin over there. Right. It, it, it was not, it, that does, there's not, there's not any pipe behind your property there. So right. if you raise the elevation to where you are, all that water is going to be running into the next door neighbor behind you. That, that's all going to be, wash, you know, just running there and into the neighbor. I, I can't really say northeast or west, but down Peskin on the opposite side of Georgia Tavern. Sure, if, if you could bring that plan up. Um, currently, the property does drain to the rear of the property uh, towards 12, lot 12.02, towards that easement. 
So that's what it does currently. No, I understand, but whenever you bring that fill, it it, it gradually flows off. But once you bring fill in there and you raise that elevation, that's going to sheet flow off of there. Right. So now if you look at this, just, just picture the house as a pitcher's mound, if you will. Um, exactly. you're, basically, you're basically breaking the water up uh, into four directions. Uh, yeah. You're not, it's not a direct flow. So half the site is actually flowing to Peskin and will make its way down to Georgia Tavern slowly uh, that way. It won't. The whole, the whole lot's not sheet flowing anymore with this design to the back of the property. Yeah, but it, it, it's a gradual flow now. You know, it, it, it's gradual, it's grass. But once you're disturbed and you bring fill in there and that fill gets compacted, that water's going to sheet flow off of this, you know, because what are you talking, almost 10 feet of fill? No, it's it's five to six. Uh, however, we look at we we'll, we plan on bringing that elevation down a couple more feet. Hey, 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 Wendell, I got yes, a question. Sir. So, is that where the uh, the old Curry Farm um, the barns are for the horses? No, the no, this is on the corner, right across from the lake from the reservoir. This is on Peskin. Curry okay, Farm is on further down. Got. It. It's by my old house. Okay. I'm two houses down. I, I used to be two houses down from there. But that, that, when you raise that elevation, not only that, but the, the next door neighbor down Peskin, your next door neighbor on Peskin, you know, where is his septic system? Well, the next door neighbor along Peskin, uh, we've designed a swale along the property line that will take the water to the rear of the property and their, their property will not be affected by the, uh, by the runoff. Uh, however, like I said, I spoke to the applicant and we do because of the amount of fill that needs to be brought into the site, we plan on uh, turning that septic field into a, a, pump, a mounded system and okay. bringing the whole site down significantly and okay. only raising about two, two to three feet above uh, the roadway elevation, which is which is very minimal. But see, I, I still don't agree with running that water back to the back. I think it needs to come out the Peskin and down. Mr. Chairman, if I could just jump in, I apologize. Yeah. I was muted before. Uh, so I just want to give some context to the site. So right now, the, the center of the site is at elevation 98. We're proposing, uh, you know, at the, at the base of the structure, uh, the dwelling on the site to be at elevation 104. That's six feet of fill. Uh, at the center of the site, so, you know, the average male adult standing at the roadway, you know, the, the bottom of the, of the structure is going to be at your head height. So it's a significant amount of fill that they're currently proposing to be uh, imported to the site. Obviously, Mr. Maltese says, uh, you know, they would definitely look into uh, reducing that to two to three feet. I still have concerns regarding just the general fill of the site. So um, as you noted, they're proposing a mounted septic system. When you look at the design, uh, they're proposing to remove 13 feet of unsuitable fill from underneath the septic system. Um, I have concerns if that fill is to be reused on the site, especially if it's unsuitable, it probably doesn't have great infiltration characteristics. Now we're spreading that over the entire site. Um, to your point, Mr. Chairman, about compacting the soils and not letting water in, uh, you know, if you're compacting not great soils, that just compounds the issue. Um, Anthony, can you provide some testimony on, on what's to be happening with that material that's to be excavated? Yes, whoever is to install that septic field will have to remove that, that soil. If it's a uh, clay soil and it's getting removed, they're not going to need, they're not going to be able to use that as uh, suitable fill. And it will clump up and it will become impervious and, and the water will run off at a faster rate. So that that is true. And, you know, I guess the only way it, uh, the only way to enforce that is to is to certify the incoming fill on the property. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, to that point, um, you know, I, I would say that it should definitely be any a condition of any approval that any material removed to, for the installation of the septic system has to be disposed of offsite and not reused as fill. Um, I, I'm still concerned with regarding. You know, we're saying that the fill is going to be cut down to two to three feet. Three feet. Uh, the township has the ordinance for uh, importing and exporting fill from sites. Um, there are certain gradation requirements that are required for uh, fill that's to be brought onto the site. 
Um, I think, you know, for the board, we need to know whether or not that type of permit is required offhand. And maybe Matt can jump and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong on this. I believe it's a, a, a net of 700 cubic yards um, for the site. Um, so that would be something that we want to see clarified regarding the site drainage as a, as a whole. So in the existing condition, the site generally drains from south to north, so Peskin to the 20-foot um, wide easement uh, along the north side of the property. Um, you know, we're saying, you know, the condition is not going to be ex exacerbated because the flow is going to be split in four directions and that we're not causing any impact to the lot to the east lot 11.01 .01 because we're creating a, a swale along the easterly lot line that drains to the northeast corner of the property. If you look at the grades within the 20 foot wide easement along the north side of the property, you know, coming from Georgia Tavern Road, uh, which is the high sp spot of that easement, you know, we're at elevation 98, then it goes to 9777, 9713, 9704, 9704, 9697. So there's there's a large portion of that easement where they were sending this water that's just flat. Um, that's that's, that's why I'm saying. If there's an existing condition that is, um, you know, the water is not flowing downstream to the easterly direction, um, it's hard to tell because there's 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 limited grades, you know, uh, as you head east down the easement, whether the water keeps continuing to flow or not. Um, whether there's water that ponds there and that becomes an issue with, you know, stagnant water and flies, we don't know. Um, certainly raising the elevation a lot and sending more water and filling it, you know, could potentially exacerbate that condition. Um, it's just very difficult to, sh to say whether or not that is the case without, you know, additional grading in that easement. Um, you know, and then obviously knowing, you know, what material is to be imported to the site and how much. Um, and then, you know, also... Uh, Mr. Maltese alluded to the 1987 approval for the property. Um, in the resolution, it does note that the applicant at the time did try to seek, uh, you know, buy-sell letters to buy properties from the adjoining properties. Um, what I would say is, you know, and I'd like to defer this to Ron and also to Jen, is it's an undersized lot. It's currently vacant. This is a new application. Um, ownership of those lots could have changed in the time since then. Um, you know, how do we know? 87. Like the... The public hearing for that's the subject of that re resolution, you know, dates back to when I was still in high school. So I think, you know, first of all, it's required by law when you're seeking relief for an undersized lot to to send out buy sell letters. So maybe they don't they won't sell you property, but maybe they'll buy your property. And I agree with Charlie, like a, su a substantial amount of time has passed since this resolution took place and it's incumbent upon the applicant before us today to have those buy sell letters. I mean, I, you know, we haven't really heard any planning testimony and, and I, I will get to that in a little bit, but as you know, in terms of the buy sell, that's, that has to happen. And I don't think the board can act on this application until that, until that time, because I think it's a requirement under the law for that to have happened. So I can I, notice I agree with you. And it's um, absolutely required, which is why I brought it up right at the beginning. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, there seems to be a number of concerns, uh, notwithstanding the buy-sell letters that, that I'm hearing from Charlie, that I'm hearing from you as well. Um, I would indicate to the board that it would be very difficult, I believe, to move on the application tonight. I'm not suggesting we should stop, but um, I'm hearing two significant questions, at least regarding gradation of the property. Charlie has concerns, Jen has concerns, and I have concerns as to the buy-sell letters. Um, I think we can go as far as we can tonight, um, if we can get the concerns out on the record, um, but I do think they'll have to come back. Uh, Charlie and Jen, do you agree with me on that? I do. I mean, one of my other concerns is the fact that this is a mounded septic system in the front on Georgia Tavern Road, which aesthetically is totally undesirable. So I haven't seen, based on the limited plan that I have here, and I get that it's a plot plan, but at the same time, you are, you do need relief from this board. You know, you're going to have to do something with that frontage along Georgia Tavern Road because I've seen those mounted systems on Route 9 and they're hideously ugly. So what I don't want to have happen is, is that the board act favorably on the development of this property and then we see this big six foot mound sticking out of the ground, which will be totally out of character as you're going down Georgia Tavern Road. Like something needs to, to happen along that frontage, whether it be landscaping or what have you, to screen that. 
because, you know, I'm not advocating for a mounded septic system, you know, a couple feet off of the top road. Aesthetically, no, I don't see that. Yeah. Let, let me input there, too. You also have site triangles. That's a very dangerous intersection. Georgia, I, I've yeah. seen numerous accidents at Georgia Tavern in Lemon Pesk in there. Uh, I, I've seen fatalities there. When I used to live Running there, road, that's in, in Georgia Tavern. That that is it's a it's a very it's a very, yep, bad intersection. And you know, building up a mound and then uh, you go in and start screening that mound. I don't know about that. Well, they should show the site triangle on the plan. I think Charlie did ask for that in his letter. So I think if they show the site triangle and then screen as long as they're outside the site triangle with the screening. I think you can accomplish both. I don't think you need it to be visible all the way along the frontage, but I do think that they need to show the side triangle at the intersection. Yeah, but it, you got to understand if you look at the plan, if, if Matt, if you can bring that plan back up, if you look at that plan, Georgia Tavern, th this property, Georgia Tavern runs at an angle right there. Yeah. So your side triangle is going to be a lot different than a, a normal squared off triangle. No, I agree, which is why I think Charlie asked for it in his letter. So, you know, there, there's a lot of issues with the plan as is. Number one, the, the next door neighbor on Peskin, we don't know where his septic system is. We yeah. don't know where his water well is. You know, um, the other thing is the, this drainage easement back there, I don't think that... You know, that's not a ditch. It's not a swell. Well, and the mm. thing, too, is it doesn't say drainage easement. It says township easement. So we don't really know yeah. what the intention of that easement is. No, I, I totally agree. I think it might even be a paper street, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. So, Mr. 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 Chairman, uh, as a, uh, I just like to briefly interrupt. I apologize. I can no, note that... Yeah. The, you know, as, as stated, the applicant, you know, is, is seeking to purchase the lot from the current owner with the intention of residing in it. And uh, we wonder if this time it would be appropriate to carry uh, carry this hearing and in order to, or to allow time to submit maybe a revised set of plans to the board. Yes. Well, let's I mean, get the control on the record. Uh, yeah, Mr. let's Chair. get everything on the record. Jen. Okay, the the yeah. buy sell the buy sell letter. Yeah. We need to see the site triangle. If they aren't going to raise the site, and I'm sure Charlie would say this anyway, they should show us what the grading is going to be. If it's going to be like two, three feet now versus the six exactly. feet that we're seeing, and then show the site triangle along, you know, at the intersection, and then to the best they can try to screen that system. I mean, if it comes down to two, three feet, it shouldn't be as difficult to screen as it would be at six feet. Right. I so, I mean, those types of things are, are what I'm looking for. But, and then I agree with you that they need to show, or at least know the distance from their proposed well to the septic on the adjacent lot of Peskin, as well as the well to make sure that there's proper separation there. Um, between, because you know you have to have a hundred feet, so that septic system could be right on that coincident property line, and there wouldn't be adequate separation. So, Mr. Chairman, what I would say is uh, I would strongly recommend that the applicant reach out to the Board of Health, um, Mount County Board of Health. Uh, they keep pretty good and accurate records on location of wells and septic systems that have been approved on uh, uh, adjacent properties. Um, they should be able to assist in that. Uh, what I would say, uh, a concern that I have, obviously, we're talking about the site triangle, making sure that the septic system is outside of the site triangle, and then appropriately screening it so it's not, uh, you know, a visual impact to uh, both frontages. Um, the Monmouth County Board of Health will obviously have comment and may take issue with uh, screening proximity to the septic system. You don't want to get roots from trees and things like that into your septic system because it could impact um, the uh, you know functioning of the system. So uh, they should definitely coordinate with Monmouth County Board of Health, make sure that they're acceptable to any landscaping or screening that they're proposing before they come back um, to the board. Um, a couple other questions that I had just for clarification from the uh, applicant is, uh, uh, it's, it's unclear from the survey and the plan provided whether or not uh, right-of-way dedication has been provided previously under the prior application, whether it's proposed with the current application. Anthony, can you provide some testimony on that? Yes, sir. 
Um, we could not locate a filed map that actually uh, depicted the eight and a half foot wide uh, dedication. However, we have a deed, um, I'll tell you the deed book and page. It's deed book 5672, page 828, where it references uh, that the, eight, the, the entire property uh, consists of one acre with the reduction of this um, 0 0.17 acres of the eight and a half foot wide strip of land going around it. So um, we don't have a plan that depicts it. We just have the deed to go by that that's already been dedicated. And this plan already shows the differential on that. Okay, so I would just say, uh, obviously, any site triangles, make sure that it's included, uh, you know, it's based off of these new lot lines and things like that. Obviously, I think it's based off of your, your travel lane and things like that, too. I just want to make sure that what's shown, um, if you could provide a copy of that deed for the board's record and then, you know, also review by the board's attorney, I think that would be helpful. Sure. Um, some other uh, questions I had, there's, looks like there's several trees located throughout the property um, that are a pr pretty significant size. Um, you know, I think at least they need to be, they're not going to be shown to survey, survey grade. They need to at least be located, you know, pretty close, uh, approximately from an aerial and shown on the plans, um, noted with tree removal, if to be removed, if to remain tree protection fence, uh, things of that effect. Um, personally, I'd like to see a little bit more information grading wise, uh, at the rear when I say rear of the site, I'm going to say the north of the site. So within that drainage easement, and then as you head east, um, like I said, drainage easement. Uh, sorry, I apologize. The township, uh, 20 foot wide township easement. Uh, I'd just like to see more grades as you head east, so we can, you know, have an idea of where that water flows. Um, like I said, right now there's seems to be definitely a 50 to 100 foot flat area. Um, with a lake, it's a lake whenever it rains here. Yeah. yeah so so, so Charlie, question. Yep. If, 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 if a structure would be put up on stilts there, that would certainly mitigate some of the uh, the fill in the uh, the flow of the of, of the water, right? Build it up uh, high. Certainly, building on piles and raising it above grade and keeping the lot elevation what it is uh, would have uh, less of an impact on the, the the flow of water. You know, the uh, once you increase the slopes, the water flows faster and gets to the point a lot quicker. Having said that, I would say that would be very out of characteristic for the properties in Howell Township and in the area. That would be Agreed. something more akin to what you see in the short towns. Uh, yep. so Talking about aesthetic impacts, uh, you know, I think that's something that the board should consider. That's not necessarily 100% practical. What I would say is, um, you know, does the lot need to be filled six feet? I don't think so. Uh, and obviously, six feet of fill on a one-acre lot is is a very big change from what's out there now. Um, you know, does 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 the just the septic system need to be mounted uh, because of seasonal high water table possibly? Um, does the structure itself have to be raised three feet? I don't know. I think you can still achieve grading around the septic system and get the water to sheet flow off the property. Um, and then also maintain kind of the general grading characteristics of the site without raising around the prop, the house itself, you know, three, four, five, six feet. Um, it's hard to tell without having like a revised grading plan in front of us. You know, we're just talking, um, hypothetically right now. Um, I think it's something I would recommend once the applicant has generated some type of conceptual grading plan um, to maybe schedule a meeting with myself um, to take a look at that and just make sure it's acceptable uh, to me before they come back to the board um, just to try to streamline the process. Um, with the uh, dry wells proposed, obviously Mr. Multi said they're going to propose dry wells. I'd just like to see those shown on the plans. Obviously, we're a one-acre lot. There's minimum separation distances to the septic system, septic tank, also to adjacent septic tanks. We're going to want to see that on, on the plans. Um, with whatever the final lock rating is, I just ask that they provide a, um, you know, a cut fill analysis for the property just so the board knows as a condition of approval whether or not, you know, uh, you know um, uh, import-export fill permit is required. Um, obviously, about the site triangle easement. Um, I'd also ask the applicant to provide construction details for the driveway, any concrete walks, the dry wells, 
um, any asphalt driveways. I think they're proposing a concrete apron and then an asphalt driveway. Uh, we just want to make sure that those details are provided on the plans, the plans and acceptable to the board before, um, you know, they, they proceed uh, forward. So that's all I have right now, Mr. Chairman, in a nutshell. Let's Charlie, yep. would, uh, would freehold soils need to be, I, I usually they do on, on a large yes. fill yep. area. The so disturbance of the lot area is certainly uh, greater than 5,000 square feet, so they'll need uh, freehold soil conservation district approval as well. Um, sometimes that's left to a condition of the approval. Um, having said that, given the amount of fill and, and grade changes that are proposed on the site, I would strongly recommend that the applicant at least have filed an application with Freehold Soils before they come back to the board um, so that it's on their radar. Um, if not, having an approval would be uh, preferable, but at least having filed the application um, before they come back to the board. Any other from the board members? Mr. Cantor? No, I'm good. Thank you. No, Charlie laid it all out. So as long as the applicant, uh, you know, works with Charlie in advance, then some of these issues can probably be resolved prior to uh, coming back in front of us. Okay. Mr. Martin? No question. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Uh, I was looking on the blueprint and uh, trying to figure out the distance between the proposed well and the septic tank. I know that there's, you know, more than 100 feet there, but it didn't specify the distance. And also, uh, is there a house behind this house? I know there's one in Jake. On the other, other, but on the other side of the easement, there is, yes. Okay, so do we need to know where their well and septic is also? Yes, we do. Because we didn't ask, we only asked for the adjacent property, not the one behind the property, applicable well, property. We need to know the adjacent property owners, septic and wells. Yeah, but what about the one to the rear behind it? They're adjacent. They're adjacent. It's, 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 so so it's a two frontages. So Mr. Chairman, to clarify, it's an easement. The 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 property of the North Lot 1202 still owns the land within the easement. It's just an easement to the township to, uh, you know, for specific purposes. If it's a drainage easement to in install and maintain drainage, uh, you know, if it's for access, uh, you know, it's for putting in a path or a driveway um, in the future. So that is an adjacent property. That land within the easement is still owned by the property to the north 1202. So, yes, we do need to know where the well and the septic system at for the property to the north and to the east. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Moretti. No questions. Mr. Hughes. Yeah, I would just echo what others have said, you know, working with Jen and Charlie would uh, definitely uh, move them along nicely and I look forward to seeing some revisions. Okay. Jennifer. No, I don't, I don't have anything else. Okay. Okay, Eileen. Okay, what, what's the next open available date there? How long do you think it would take? to get everything revised, Mr. Morati. Um, I will have to discuss with obviously Mr. Maltese and uh, the applicant um, as far as, you know, getting out there and revising the plans. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe Mr. Maltese would be a little better at telling, giving you a timeline as far as uh, how long it would take for something like that to be prepared. Uh, we're a little backed up on the surveying schedule. But uh, engineering-wise, it's pretty quick. When's the next meeting? Um, the, next what, what, what they the next available meeting I have is July 27th with one case already scheduled. Then I have okay. August 10th or August 24th. No, I think July 27th would be fine for us. That's no issue. Let's play your time. Mr. Chairman, just one last comment uh, before, before we wrap it up. Um, uh, just... Anthony, is the applicant proposing a basement, or do they not know at this time, or is there a possibility of that in the future? Um, no, they're, they're proposing a crawl space. They'll be proposing okay. a crawl space. Okay. All right, so there's no setback issues uh, with the septic system or anything like that? No. Okay. Okay. Is July 27th okay, Eileen? Yes. Okay, I got to go to the agenda now. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, case BA 2103, Robert Weir, will be carried to July 27th with no further notice. And that July 27th meeting will be here at the main meeting room in Town Hall, 7.30 p.m., but it will not be open for the public. The public will still need to call in and watch the video online. Uh, I don't know if this is uh, okay, but uh, they have to have the buy-sell letters by then? Yes. yes. They have. They need to address the concerns of the board. And our board of profession was also. Quite I have good. a legal question, if if you if you guys don't mind, um, since he's the buy, the applicant's the buyer of the property. Mm -hmm. Does he have the right to to, to seek to, uh, buy sell letter to, to neighbors? Who who would who would be responsible for that? The actual current yeah. owner? No, the applicant can do it as a contract purchaser of the property, as part of this application. There has to be a showing one way or another. Obviously, if there's no ability or no answer, um, they should be put on notice, and uh, that's all we need, but it is required. So I have no problem if the contract purchaser prepares the letters and sends them out via certified so that uh, we can introduce it as an exhibit and uh, you know, essentially answer that question. Because really, it is a variance, and you are required to um, make positive proofs on whether or not there is additional land available or not. Thank you. I was just curious. Excuse me. Was there a, a question about that being a paper street in there somewhere? No. No. That was mentioned. I, 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 I said it. It's just, it's cool it was just speculation based upon the fact that it just says township easement. Typically, the easements in town are identified as drainage easement or access easement or sewer easement and this just says township easement so we don't really know what that's for and okay. I think that's just a comment. Okay. Okay. Okay, no, any further business of the board? I have no, no sir. Mr. Chair. Yes. Eileen, you had something? No, I have no further business. Thank oh, okay. you. Okay, Matt Howard. No, none. Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Cantor. Second, use. Okay, you got a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, we'll see y'all at the next meeting. Okay, and the next Thank meeting will be here at Town Hall. In yeah, person, uh, Eileen, are, are we, do we need to bring masks? Do we, is that all required? How, how, what's the protocol? As of right now, I would say yes, you do. I will find out and get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.